Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Ask Dr. Nick. My name is Dr. Nick Schmidlkoffer and I work for the Neurologic Wellness Institute. And today's question is, why is heart rate variability important? And heart rate variability is a relatively new metric, uh, at least in the public setting, that people are looking at for health. And when it comes to heart rate versus heart rate variability, there are very big differences. Your heart rate is your pulse, or it's how many beats per minute does your heart beat. Um, and we generally want that to be super low. We want it, especially at a resting state. Uh, we don't want that to be probably anything over 80, but um, ideally it's in like the 50 to 60s. Um, and so this heart, rate, this heart rate should be low. Now, heart rate variability is the variability that occurs between each heartbeat, meaning that a heartbeat, even though it's 60 beats per minute, each of those 60 beats in that minute may come at a slightly different time. The higher variability that you have, the better or the more robust your system is, the more robust your autonomic nervous system is. And if your autonomic nervous system is more robust, more healthy, that is going to lead to um, a better long-term outcome of longevity, of cognitive performance, better sleep, better adaptability to stressors, and therefore um, not be stressed out as much by different activities of daily living, different work stress or, or daily stressors. And so I want to talk a little bit, I want to show you a graph on what heart rate variability looks like, but then we'll talk about one paper somewhat older that just kind of goes through um, how heart rate variability is related to cognition, uh, cognitive performance, and the autonomic nervous system, which we deal with every single day on a daily basis with concussions, uh, stress, anxiety, depression, a lot of other factors, uh, especially autoimmunity and, and things that are correlated with gut dysfunction. So let's go here. We'll share this picture first. Okay, so here is a picture of heart rate variability. And this is on the top, we have a low heart rate variability. First, let's look at the graph. So the graph is every time there's a big spike, that is when the heart beats. The little spikes, this is a, it's a P wave and a QRS wave with a T wave, okay? That is a, that's a heartbeat cycle. And this is kind of when your atria contract, this is when your ventricles contract and then your ventricles relax and then it happens again. If this peak at contractility occurs a second, one second, one second, one second. This is low variability. It is so consistent at one second. This is not necessarily good. On the other hand, high heart rate variability is when this peak occurs at different time points, 0.93 seconds, 0.98 seconds, 1.2 seconds, 1.3. Uh, maybe then it'll go to 0.94, right? It goes back and forth. There's this wide range of variability between heartbeats or this beat to beat rhythm. The reason why this is important is that it shows that our parasympathetic, our rest and digest system has this control over our heart rate at a beat to beat rhythm. Meaning that if our heart rate is going at an equal time all, all throughout, our parasympathetic nervous system isn't necessarily controlling that well. Our rest and digest system is not having good control over this heart rate variability. And so the higher our heart variability is, it means that our parasympathetic nervous system can control it better on a beat to beat ratio. We have so many things that are affecting our body on a daily, daily basis, whether that be light from the ceiling, that would be what we are eating, um, a stressor, a thought in our head, and all of those things are going to affect maybe our heart rate or change this balance between the rest and digest parasympathetic versus the fight or flight sympathetic nervous system. And so we need proper control, proper, more um, robustness in the system, more ability for this parasympathetic nervous system to control this. And so on the bottom here, they kind of have um, a low heart variability is more of that fight or flight nervous system. You get easily exhausted 
low adaptability to stressors and decreased cognition versus the high heart rate variability in the rest and digest, improved performance, uh, improved energy, high adaptability, and improved cognition. Okay, so now that we talked about that, let's go and just kind of discuss this paper briefly. And so this paper is called Heart Rate Variability Prefrontal Neural Function, so the prefrontal cortex, the frontal lobe, and cognitive performance. So how a neural visceral integration perspective on self-regulation, adaptation, and health. So it's an older paper from 2009, but I still think it's a pretty good one and I like a picture in it. Um, and so heart rate variability is basically this integration um, with a set of neural structures involved in cognition, affective emotion, autonomic regulation to set up this heart rate variability and how it's related to performance. Um, they have individual, so they, they reviewed mul multiple studies. They saw individual differences in heart variability that are related to performance on tasks associated with executive function and prefrontal cortex activity. And so in this conclusion, they saw this relationship between cognitive performance heart rate variability, and the prefrontal neural function. Okay, so how this can be provided to improve mental health states, physical and mental health, but mental health especially. Um, so there's a lot of, uh, you know, I like to highlight things. I want to talk about the central autonomic network. Okay, so the central autonomic network is this network in our brain from top to bottom. And how it functions to give us a sense of autonomic control. And the autonomic control is this automatic control of our heart rate, our heart rhythm. And then by setting that up, that allows us for our prefrontal cortex, um, which is more of the decision-making, executive function, inhibitory control, filtering out uh, things that we don't need, and thoughts we don't need to be able to work better and more efficiently. And so if we start from the top, the prefrontal cortex is right up here. It's right behind your, uh, right behind your frontal bone, right behind your forehead. And there are a couple parts in it. The medial prefrontal cortex is kind of up in this strip. The orbital frontal is right above the eye. And they talk to different areas in the brain that are a little bit farther back. So the cingulate cortex being farther back here, the insula being deep in our brain, dealing more with emotions and visceral functions. And then the amygdala. And the amygdala is that fear, limbic, emotional center that is really deep in the brain. And anytime you have like a fear response or a stress response, this guy is normally active. And so the prefrontal cortex has control over these areas. And, but these areas will also fire down deeper into the brain, into the brainstem. And this is what where like the hypothalamus, the hypothalamus is what deals with the neuroendocrine system. So the ability for us to make hormones like thyroid hormone, estrogen, testosterone, uh, growth hormone, uh, missing multiple cortisol through the adrenocorticotropin response. So the hypothalamus kind of governs that through the pituitary gland. And then you have the periodontal gray, which deals with different things like chronic pain and inhibiting pain. Uh, and the parabrachial and pontine nucleus, which are also dealing with these visceral responses. Um, and so we have this connection between the top part of our brain that goes deeper and deeper. And then this goes straight to our autonomic output areas, which this one is the nucleus tractus solitarius, the caudal ventral lateral medulla, and the dorsal motor of vagus or the vagus nerve, which is gonna help with parasympathetic nervous system. While on the other hand, the rostral ventral lateral medulla, the intermedial lateral cell column down our spinal cord is the sympathetic. And so all of this has connections to leading to the output of our brainstem. The output of our brainstem leads to the, either the suppression of heart rate by the parasympathetic nervous system or the activation of our heart rate by the sympathetic. What we want, the parasympathetic has more control over our heart rate, especially the right side of our, of our brain, frontal lobe, down, it has more control over that, the parasympathetic um, heart rate. 
And so we want more activation here and less activation there. If we do that, our heart rate variability goes up. We become more robust. We are, our system is able to make changes to increase our heart rate if we need to during a stressful situation, uh, a test, um, a review at work, a, a stressful situation where we're like caught in a car and there's a bunch of traffic and we're late. All these things allow us to react if we have a good central autonomic network and a good heart rate variability to react and, and react and read these areas and therefore perform at a high level. And so this article not only talked about performance as in cognitive performance, but it can also be used for athletic performance, physical performance as well. So having a good heart rate variability is very important for overall health because of this adaptability, this better sleep, and this better efficiency in our brain. So um, I didn't get to the end of that article, but I really wanted to talk about what we can do to increase our heart rate variability. And so there are many things. First of all, getting a good night's sleep. A good night's sleep is so important for increased heart variability because it allows our brain to rest. It allows that parasympathetic nervous system to activate and clean out debris and improve our system in general. Then a diet and healthy lifestyle, right? So having a good diet, staying away from inflammatory foods like refined carbs, sugars, refined oils, all super important. Then a good lifestyle, as in like exercise, not overtraining necessarily. If we exercise too much, we overtrain, our heart rate variability is going to drop. We do need those recovery points. And so having a more diverse outlook on, on our workouts. Now, if we're a professional athlete and we need to do harder training, well, then we need more sleep and we need more recovery as well. So there's a kind of a give and take there. Uh, so diet, lifestyle, we have sleep, meditation is another great one. Deep breathing, diaphragmatic breathing can help activate the vagus, activate the parasympathetic nervous system to bring that heart rate variability down. Uh, other things such as like neurofeedback, if somebody has too high of, of beta waves, too, too high of electrical activity in their brain, it may be causing um, this emotional stress that then leads to a decreased heart rate variability in the long run. And then other things that we do is, is to fix some of those parts that are in the brainstem, that central autonomic network. A lot of times if somebody is really smart, has, has great control, um, executive function planning, a great frontal lobe, but they have problems in their brainstem, we can use what is good about their brain to help activate other areas. And by activating other areas, that helps to incorporate or envelop a perfect circle and loop in that central autonomic network. And that will then bring down that rest and heart rate, increase the heart rate variability, and then allow people to have better cognitive performance, live their daily lives um, through work, school, whatever that may be. So I hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, I think heart rate variability is just this new metric that everybody is trying to figure out for themselves. And I know that there are a lot of tools out there to, to measure it. And I'm going to say right now that like wristwatches, like an Apple watch is probably not the best way. The best way is maybe like a chest strap um, because it is truly right on the heart. And there are different ways that you can do that. So uh, if you have any questions or comments, I'd love to hear them. Thanks and have a great day. Stay healthy.